Whether I am composing an original song or singing a traditional one, writing an essay or shaping images into a poem, what I most desire is that my efforts will result in some open space for the receiver, some fresh pasture of possibility. That is a quote from Kate Chadbourne. She is a poet, a storyteller, a singer-songwriter, a musician of instruments such as flute, piano, and other good things, as well as her voice. Kate grew up on the coast of Maine. Her childhood memories and love of that area of New England have stayed close with her and influenced her many passions of the arts. She has a gift for making music and has brought it out to many stages, concerts, coffee houses, museums, colleges. It's been on NPR with the Revels. And she has published two chapbooks of her poetry and has two D CD recordings of her original songs. Kate lives and loves all the art within her, and she practically exhales it. When she was a child, she loved making music so much she'd get up sometimes in the dark and go play piano when her parents were asleep so as not to disturb them. She had a great mentor in her life being her childhood piano teacher, which she has been grateful for all her life. She now gives lessons herself and mentors other children and people who are interested in finding their passion in the arts. In addition to this, Kate has worked as a scholar, a professor at Brandeis and Harvard, teaching writing composition, folklore, storytelling, and a number of courses in Irish language. Along with her love of the coast of Maine, she keeps close ties to her homeland, her second homeland of Ireland, where she travels and she's giving a tour uh, later this year for Smithsonian. In the last year and a half, Kate has also added to her repertoire of work to offer to compose for free well-wishing blessing songs to anyone anywhere in the world who might be in need of a little blessing or prayer at a difficult time or dealing with illness in their life. This happened because late one night she saw a piece of news on the television about children who were starving in Somalia and felt overwhelmed and helpless about what she could do beyond sending a check. And then she had a thought, uh, being uh, connected to the Irish culture, how blessings are such an important thing. She said, you know, blessings happen so much, you get blessings about butter, you get blessings about the moon. And so she decided that she would create a blessing song for those children and send it out to them and offer her comfort and care and love. And said, I do think caring matters and that holding people in our heart is a step in the right direction. And she started a website and has offered this service to people throughout the world and has heard different people and their different stories in asking for a blessing. And before I invite her up, I will just add that Kate said, blessings connect us, they sweeten and strengthen us, both in giving and the receiving. And it will be a true blessing to have Kate Chadbourne come up here and share her music and her songs with us this morning. First thing, so please give a warm hand to Kate Chadbourne. This is an exciting month. I love National Poetry Month. I celebrate it. And I was thrilled when Cheryl invited me to come here to be with you today and to share some of the songs that I've made from poems, not my own poems. Um, I've been so interested in putting poems to music. Most times I'll read a poem and then I feel like I begin to shake and I need to uh, interact with it. As the word that comes through my mind is participate. So I have to participate with it. So I love, we'll start out in 1923 uh, with Chanson Innocent, and I promise it's not in French because you'd be throwing tomatoes at me <laughs> if, I, if I tried that. Uh, it's E.E. E. Cummings. Um, in just spring when the world is mud luscious, the little lame balloon man whistles far and wee. And Eddie and Bill come running from marbles and piracies, and it's spring. I'll let you hear the rest. But I'm a fan of Pan, the god-footed, um, the goat-footed god, right? And here he's in this poem, so I had, couldn't resist it. Mud and 
luscious The little lame balloon man whistles far and we And Eddie and Bill come running from marbles and piracies And it's spring and piracies And it's spring In just spring, when the world is puddle wonderful, the queer old balloon man whistles far and we. And Betty and Isabel come dancing from hopscotch and jump rope. And it's spring and jump rope. And it's spring. It's just spring and the goat-footed balloon man whistles far and we And it's spring, yes it's spring, yes it's spring Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it's so good to be able to finally sing that in earnest, you know? There's one little patch of snow left out in my yard in Lunenburg, but the, the first daffodils have come out, so hooray. So I love to take you once. So that was 1923, and I think I might have actually had my past life in the 20s, judged, judging by my preference for these poems. I don't know. But last summer, Cheryl Peralt and I had a trip up to uh, Camden, Maine, which where Edna St. Vincent Millay, that's kind of her home ground. And we went to the White Hall Inn, and 100 years ago, so that was in August of th 2012, and 100 years ago, Edna St. Vincent Millay was discovered there. She was actually playing the Steinway Grand Piano that's in the foyer there. And she caught the attention of a wealthy patron who then sent her to Vanderbilt with, and this is my favorite part, a clothing allowance. <laughs> and um, so I, of course, sat down and began to play, but nobody offered me a clothing allowance. <laughs> Darn. But what a thrill, though, a hundred years later to sit at her at that piano and feel her presence there. And she's a wild old soul, but I love her. This poem uh, is another one with a, with a foreign name, Recuerdo, which means I remember. And I read this poem, and I was at the kitchen sink later doing the dishes, and I started to tremble. So the words just to, it's about a ferry ride, as, as in, now people who know me think F-A-I-R-Y because I'm kind of fairy mad, but this is F-E-R-R-Y, as in boat. <laughs> So, and I love to take the ferry out. So she says, we were very tired. We were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. And we, oh gracious, I'll sing it and we'll help for the best. <laughs> we, um, and you ate an apple and I ate a pear from a dozen of each we had bought somewhere. And the sky went wan and the wind came cold and the sun rose dripping a bucket full of gold. That's actually the second verse, so you'll have a lot of suspense for the first one, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. So, a pleasure to play this for you. We were very tired, we were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. It was bare and bright and it smelled like a stable But we looked into a fire and we leaned across a table We lay on a hillside under the moon And the whistles kept blowing and the dawn came soon
We were very tired. We were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. And you ate an apple and I ate a pear. From a dozen of each we had bought somewhere. And the sky went wan and the wind came cold. And the sun rose dripping a bucket full of gold. We were very tired, we were very merry We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry We said good morrow mother to a shawl-covered head And we bought a morning paper which neither of us read And she wept, God bless you, for the apples and pears and we gave her all our money but our subway fares so much. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's a real gift to me to get to share that poem with you because doesn't it, poetry has a special resonance in these times, I think. Well, it always does, doesn't it? But that is the beauty of an ordinary moment in our lives. That is, that we take the time to savor. So, so I love this is a new poem to me, um, and so we're going backwards. So that was 1922, um, and the next poem I'd like to sing for you comes from 1921, and it's by a poet called Eleanor Wiley, and this is a poem called Valentine, and again, you know, like Emily Dickinson said she recognized poetry when it blew the top of her head off? That's how I feel. I read a poem like this, and I go, <laughs> like, it, it really takes me by the throat. This is a poem she says, too high, too high to pluck, my heart must swing. A fruit no bee shall suck, no, bur no wasp shall sing. If on some night of cold it falls to ground, in apple leaves of gold I'll wrap it round. But I shall keep it sealed in spice and salt, this is her heart, in a carven silver cup in a deep vault. Before my eyes are blind, my lips are mute. I must eat core and rind of that same fruit, and so was, must we all, right? Before my heart is dust at the end of all, eat it I must, though it were bitter gall, but I will keep it sweet by some strange art, all of us. Wild honey shall I eat when I eat my heart. So that's what we're doing, isn't it, everybody? We are keeping our hearts sweet by some strange art. That's what we want to do. Too high, too high to pluck, my heart must swing. A brood no bee shall suck, no wasp shall sting. If on some night of cold it falls to ground In apple leaves of gold I'll wrap it round But I shall keep it sealed in spice and salt In a carven silver cup in a deep vault
Before my eyes are blind, my lips are mute. I must eat core and rind of that same fruit. Before my heart is dust at the end of all, eat it I must, though it were bitter gall. But I will keep it sweet by some strange art. Wild honey shall I eat when I eat my heart. When I eat my heart. Oh. As my father would say, that poem is a corker, isn't it? <laughs> now, so we went 1923, 22, 21. Let's go back to the 18th century because we probably haven't been there in a while. Um, this is a poem uh, that is found, it's actually by an anonymous poet. It's in Irish, and I'm going to sing it to you in Irish and in English. Um, but it's, it's in Irish, it's called She Bla Gal Nanarnia, which means she's the blackberry flower. And it's we don't know the name of the poet, but it comes out of the end of really the, po the bardic order in Ireland when the schools had collapsed uh, under the weight of English bureaucracy and poets were on the road, but people were still making stuff. And this poem was recorded in oral um, transmission over those couple of hundred years because it was precious, and I think it is. So I will say it for you in English. She's the blackberry flower. She's the... She's the blackberry flower. She's the fine raspberry flower. Gracious, will I get it? Will I be? Yes, hang on. <laughs> Did I? No, I didn't. She's the, black, she's the blackberry flower. She's the fine raspberry flower. Sorry. She's the plant of best breeding your eye could behold. She's my darling. She's my dearie. She's my fresh apple blossom. She is summer in the cold time between Christmas and Easter. That's the poem. It's a lovely poem, I think. She black gal, no nyarnya. She blood jazz na su kriwi. She in plandra bar main wai. Leorg do khul. She ma kushla, she ma runi. She blood na nu kuri. She sauru. In Sanuakti, a journalic is Kashk. She's the black bear. Flower, she's the fine raspberry flower. She's the plant of best breeding your eye could behold. She's my darling, she's my dearie, she's my fresh apple blossom. She is summer. In the cold time between Christmas and Easter.
very much. Oh, thank you so much. I love thinking that that poet is heard. That pleases me. Well, I'd love to play for you one more poem song. And this one came to me through a man I met at one of my concerts. I had just been giving a concert about poems um, and stories of poets. And the, someday we'll meet again. And I'll tell you lots of stories of the wild old poets of Ireland and Wales and the craziness they get up to. But I'd just given this program, and in the front row, there was an extremely tall woman, maybe six feet tall, and she was wearing a floor-length strapless gown and carrying a floral cane. And she had long silver hair that went right down her back. And next to her, and she was beautiful, and next to her was this little bright-eyed man, intelligent, sharp features, and, and sort of um, witty and, and uh, wiry. And he came up to me after the performance and he said, I am a poet. And I said, well, I guessed that just looking at you. <laughs> and he said, I have a poem I've always wished somebody would put to music. And I felt, I must say, a bit of dread because I thought, I don't know, you know, you have to connect and I don't want to disappoint anybody. But I said, please send it. And he sent it and I'm going to say the poem for you. He wrote this poem in 1987. So here's another love song. And it was for that woman, Patricia. And the man's name is Riley. His name is Riley Platt. And this is the poem that he used to woo Patricia. It goes like this. I want you, red haired lady, in my life, however that is going to be. No, I don't know how it will all turn out. Guess we'll have to wait and see. What if we were affianced, you and me? Could that help you see it all differently? <laughs> I thought, that is the coolest poem ever. <laughs> so I had to put it to music. So you'll hear me at the end, I sing Patricia and Riley. If anybody wants to sing Patricia and Riley, because that was now 30 years later or so, they are passionately in love, this beautiful woman and this wild poet. It's how it should be. So beautiful love story. So I, I'd love to, first, before I do play, I'd love to thank all of you so much for being such beautiful company today and receiving these poems so graciously. And I'd love to thank my dear, dear friend, Cheryl, for inviting me to come here and be with you. And I'd also like to thank Dan and John, uh, particularly, who helped get this rig set up for me. <laughs> so thank you all. <coughs> So here's red-haired lady, and if you're red-haired, um, this is for you too. I want you, red-haired lady, in my life, however that is going to be, going to be, going to be. No, I don't know how it will all turn out. Guess we'll have to wait and see, wait and see, wait and see. What if we were affianced, you and me, you and me? Could that help you see it all differently? you red-haired lady in my life however that is going to be going to be going to be no I don't know how it will all turn out guess we'll have to wait and see wait and see wait and see Patricia and Riley Patricia and Riley Patricia and Riley Thank you very much. Thank you all. Passing. Walking to town of a morning, bright on a lawn I pass. I saw dandelions and violets shining from the grass. Then on my way returning, the mower had come by. 
their yellow and purple beauty, severed and strewn, did lie. Like violets, we bloom in the morning, in the moment until our moment is past, and we fall to the blades of the mower like dandelions and grass. The blossoming of the moment is ours to enjoy while we may. Then like dandelions and violets, we bow to the end of the day. Thank you. Peach and pear.